لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك له لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لبيك والنعمة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. This is us, you and Sad Ko. I'm Rashida Abu Bakr, your regular anchor, welcoming you to another edition of the program. Glad to be with you once again. The National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, conducted a training session on Wednesday for ICT personnel from State Programs Warfare Boards, the FCT, and the Armed Forces. The training was to acquaint participants with the e-track system preparatory to the commencement of the registration of intending programs for the 2024 Hajj. The e-track system was introduced in 2014 by the Saudi Arabian government in order to automate Hajj operation and also ensure effective control and surveillance on all those entrusted with the responsibility of handling services for programs during the Hajj. And so, our spotlight segment will focus on the e-track training program organized by NACON at the conference hall of the Hajj House. Also on the program, we have Making the Hajj and NACON News Diary, which highlights the activities of NACON and other stakeholders in the Hajj industry. And on the quiz, a winner has emerged. Details will be announced in the course of the program. Stay tuned for these and more. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The program kicks off with the news diary. Top in the lineup, NACON and State fix Monday next week as deadline for the payment of heart fare by intending programs. And NACON opens portal for the recruitment of personnel for the national medical team. Stay tuned for these and more. Keep watching. <laughs> In an effort to ensure smooth issuance of passports to intending pilgrims for the Hajj exercises, the chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, Malan Jalal Ahmed Arabi, and his team met with the officials of the Nigeria Immigration Service at its headquarters. The Controller General of Immigration, Mrs. Adepoju Caroline, represented by Deputy Controller General Usman Babangida, welcomed the NACON officials. Speaking during the visit, Malan Jalal Ahmed Arabi stressed the importance of NIS in Hajj administration. The NACON boss appreciated the reforms being introduced by the Nigeria Immigration Service, saying it is important for a DEX officer to be assigned to each state to attend to issues associated with the issuance of passports. One of the contributory factors that led to either late departure or disorganize the entire arrangement of airlift is sometimes issue of passport and allowances, as it were. I know everybody has his own shared responsibility. It is the responsibility of the State's Pilgrim Welfare Board to now sit them down, I know what the problem is, and put them through. But it doesn't take away the responsibility again from your establishment to probably designate maybe a person in the States or whoever to be the focal point of probably guiding on how these things are done or advising so that it becomes easy for the State's Pilgrim Welfare Board to link up with the officer in charge, lay the complaints to him without having to wait until he gets to Abuja. Responding, DCG Usman Babangida reiterated the commitment of the NIS to serve pilgrims and Nigerians in general, noting that the reforms being introduced at the NIS are designed to protect the image of Nigeria and make the system more efficient. 
we are always ready for your observation where it is necessary to comply and make it easier for you. I also want to suggest that where you have issues of passports, if I may call it shortage or you are not able to access the passport in good time. I know the ACG passport will say more about it, but I know we have front desk officers that they dedicate period and time for intending Hajj pilgrims. <laughs> In the meantime, same day, the Narcon officials also visited the office of Galaxy Backbone, an information technology-based enterprise established by the federal government to manage the IT demands of MDAs. Managing Director of the organization, Abdul Malik Suleiman, received the Narcon delegation. In his remarks, Narcon Chairman Marlon Jalal Ahmed Arabi notes that over 70% of the Commission's activities are IT-driven, coupled with the Saudi Authority's digital shift in Hajj operation. He therefore sought for the support of Galaxy for Narcon to stay ahead. We're trying to not only subscribe to what is the reality of today in terms of IT, our major partners, when I say our major partners, of course, we don't have major partners number one now, quote unquote, bigger than the Saudis. Uh, they had gone well ahead in digitalizing most of the operations of Hajj. Uh, they had planned long before now. Uh, they began to share some of their plans uh, since last year. Uh, so it only behoves on you if you're partnering with them for you to be proactive too, uh, to start planning ahead. And we felt that rather than being caught napping, we would as well brag of getting at least some minimum compliance uh, with the reality so that um, once we are asked to latch on to whatever that has to do with IT, we will say that, well, comfortably we can attempt even if we don't get it 100%. He said the Commission is currently facing challenges with its bandwidth, which, if not addressed, will affect Narcon in meeting deadlines. On his part, the Managing Director of the Galaxy Backbone outlined plans towards overcoming the hitches affecting Narcon digital operation during the Hajj. So what I would like to propose is to say itemized your priority area. Because for me, dealing with NACON is very simple. Your operations are periodical. So at a certain period, you want maximum cooperation, maximum attention, and um, increase in even the quality of service and attention that Galaxy will be rendering to you. So if it is periodical, it's very easy to plan. Um, Mbafajo, Bafajo, from Galaxy side, will lead the upscaling of your services. <laughs> the management of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, states FCT and armed forces have directed intending pilgrims to complete the payment of Hajj fares on or before the 12th of this month. This is sequel to the final announcement of 2024 fare for this year's Hajj by Narcon. The fare announced is in three categories. Pilgrims departing from Northern States and FCT, with the exception of Meiduguri and Yola, will pay 4,699,000. Those taking off from Meiduguri and Yola centers are to pay 4,679,000. And 
pilgrims departing from southern states have their fare at 4,899,000. In Kaduna State, the executive chairman of the State Pilgrims Agency, Mala Salu Abubakar, has called on intending pilgrims to comply with the deadline fixed for the completion of the payment of Hajj fare. He made the plea while briefing journalists on the level of preparations for the 2024 Hajj. Make it clear to our intended pilgrims that anybody telling them that they could uh, delay towards the end of the fe February is not actually telling them the truth. In FCT, the director of the Pilgrims Welfare Board, Malang Adamu Ivuti, echoed similar message at a press briefing. 2000, about 2,500 pilgrims have registered so far. And between now and 12th of February, when it will be finally closed, we believe that more will register. The difference in the amount to be paid by prospective pilgrims from the zones is as a result of the distance between the departing centre and Saudi Arabia, as well as the services negotiated by states in Mecca. In other news, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, will on Tuesday the 12th of this month at 12 midnight open its portal for the collection of application from those wishing to serve in the 2024 Hajj National Medical Team. Eligible candidates can access the portal via NACON website www.narcon.gov.ng. Interested doctors and pharmacists should be between 28 to 60 years and nurses and others should be between 22 and 60 years of age. Other criteria include applicants must be in active service at the time of application. Applicants must not have served in the last three exercises, that is, 2019, 2022, and 2023. And applicants must be ready to work for 28 days and be ready to stay in Saudi Arabia for 45 days. More guidelines are on the website. Collection of applications will end on the 26th of February 2024. Alhamdulillah. You are still watching As You Answer the Call, a public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other heart-related matters. In order to keep the state, FCT, and the armed forces abreast of developments on the e-track management, NACON engaged their ICT personnel for a one-day training workshop. This was on Wednesday, the 7th of February, 2024, at the conference hall of the Heart House. Details of the training program will form the trust of our next segment, Spotlight. Stay with us. Now you can lay claim. And it is my pleasure to declare uh, the training session open. Nakan Chairman Malam Jalal Ahmed Arabi declaring open the e track training program for ICT personnel from states, the FCT, armed forces, as well as Nakon zonal and outreach officials. The training sessions took place at the conference hall of the Hatch House on Wednesday, the 7th of February, 2024. The e track system, which was introduced by Saudi authorities about a decade ago, requires that all information about pilgrims performing the Hajj within a particular period as well as the services to be rendered to them, must be provided and made accessible through a computerized system. It is a prerequisite for the issuance of a visa. Speaking at the event, Nakan Chairman Malam Jalal Ahmed Arabi said the training is to enhance the capacity of ICT personnel in order to be in tune with new thinking of Saudi Arabia. And I'm sure by the time you do a wrap-up of probably what you would have discussed or what brought you, will now inform you that certain innovations were introduced in the new policy. Uh, you will discover that uh, the Saudi Authority have come out of course with an e-track system that virtually all payments and most, if not all the activities are going to be digitalized. They have to be 
on that system. Uh, but like I said, you'll be taken through. While calling on participants to take full advantage of the training, the Nakon boss explained further about the e-track processes, particularly the grouping of pilgrims during the issuance of visas. This time around, grouping will commence from your states or from the states or from the base. Uh, we'll discuss with some of your civil letters and I'm sure uh, the facilitators will inform you accordingly as how we intend doing it. And of course, that again is informed by the new policy which is contained in the e track that of course certain numbers were created is based on the numbering that the visas will be issued is based on the numbering that every tent will be marked and identified based on the grouping and on the individuals engineer gonisanda moderated the technical session during the first session the following topics were treated Overview of the e track process, new system of grouping, tagging and flight scheduling, activation of accounts, and pilgrims registration with Hatch 7 scheme. Then uh, we have activation of the user. They will activate the user, and a message is also sent to National Hatch Commission. Once the user is act activated, this is just a process for the commission. And then we we'll also have to do a selection of which port is going to be used for airlifting. Is, are we going to use the uh, air, sea, or land. Very soon, you will be seeing people who will be telling you that they are registered under the HSS and they have completed their payment. They want to come and register. Please accommodate them. We are going to send the list of qualified, successful, intending pilgrim from ICV scheme to all the states. With the data of pilgrims captured in the portal, they can easily be arranged in groups on the Saudi e track portal for the issuance of visa, allocation of accommodation, and feeding arrangements, among other services to be rendered to pilgrims. At the second session of the training, participants were taken through topics such as groupings and passport management. So, the process of passport management, at that stage, all our passports will be collected. Now, the bus capacity is now 47. All the 47 people that we have grouped together into a unit in Nigeria, their passport will be collected at that point, and then they will be issued our own local wristband so that it will indicate that this person's passport has been collected. Another topic discussed highlighted key issues on pilgrims' enlightenment, such as router booking for pilgrims, tough witch, or processing the movement of a group, and pilgrims' medical records. The system the Saudi is doing is for the whole world. They don't, they cannot kind of make any changes because of our peculiarity. So we have to key in, otherwise we'll be left behind. Other topics were pilgrims registration on Nakon e hajj data capturing and use of passport reader. The presentations generated comments, questions and observations from participants. At the end of the one day training, Participants were full of praises to Nakan for giving them the opportunity, saying the training could not have come at a better time. Uh, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alami, for the training. The training has been so wonderful and very, very interesting. Uh, this is a very new development. Um, honestly, these changes will help us to ease the processing of our pilgrims. Masha Allah, the program is as you answer the call. Coming up next is Making the Hajj. Tonight, Imam Al Hassan Yaqub continues the discussion on the history and significance of visiting Masjid al Quba in Medina. Let's hear him. <laughs> Visiting Masjid al Quba before or after Hajj or Umrah comes with great rewards. The reward for praying in Quba Masjid is equivalent to that of performing Umrah. For the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reward that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, now prayer, one prayer in al Masjid al Nabawi is 1,000 times. And then one prayer in Masjid Al Haram in Mecca mm. is 100,000 times mm. than praying anywhere. Mm. And then one prayer in Baytul Maqdis is 500 times than anywhere. And there are 
only these three moxies in the whole world that you can, you know, prepare from you wherever you are in the world to say you are going there for ibadah. So Uba is did not have did not was not mentioned among this. But the only thing that I, in addition to this is Uba, but Uba is getting the reward of Umara. The Prophet Sallallahu did not mention any particular reward, the hundred or anything, but he said the reward of Umara. And only Allah knows the reward of Umara. What is the condition for achieving such reward? Sheikh bin Bas, uh, bin Bas was asked about, is it a condition that one has to, for one to obtain the, the Umrah, mm. is it a condition for one to prepare himself at home? He said, of course. That was what was mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was asked, what if somebody just on his way, he felt that, ah, if this is Masjid Kuba, let me just branch and do it. He said, well, Allah, uh, you know, is, uh, is, 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 is buoyant. Is there any surah recommended for pilgrims to recite when performing the optional solah or nafila in Kuba Masjid? Throughout the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every Saturday, it was reported by Ibn Umar. He said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to visit Kuba Mosque, Kuba Masjid, every Saturday to go and also he will have the intention, he will prepare himself at home and will have the intention. Sometimes he say he will go walking, marshian, and sometimes rakiban. He's walking or he will go uh, riding on his camel. What supplications are recommended for pilgrims to offer while at Masjid al Quba? Can, you know, uh, uh, be in a state of dua and ask just whatever you feel you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to grant you. So there is no specific uh, dua to say this is only strictly, specially for Masjid al Quba. There is nothing. And both male and females pilgrims is the same in Masjid Kuba. Imam Al Hassan Yaqub encourages pilgrims to take advantage of every opportunity that comes their way to learn more about Islam, particularly as it relates to Hajj and Umrah. Alhamdulillah, now it's time to know the winner of last week's quiz and the question for this week. Good luck. <laughs> Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, name the city where Masjid al-Quba is located. The correct answer is, Masjid al-Quba is located in Medina. The winner is Bella Yusuf from Lagos State. He provided the answer ahead of others. Bella Yusuf will be contacted on how Narcon will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Narcon's efforts in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week. And the question is, what is the reward for performing two raka'at salat in Masjid al-Quba? Again, what is the reward for performing two raka'at salat in Masjid al-Quba? Text your answers to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck. And happy viewing. Masha Allah. Up next are your messages. Salamatul Abran from Bochi State sent in the first message. It says, Assalamu alaikum. I appreciate Narcon for this program as you answer the call. Keep it up. Al Ali Adamu Askira sent the second message. It reads, I pray for the new leadership at Narcon for a successful 2024 Hajj operation. May Allah make us among those who will perform the Hajj. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you same time, same day next week with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send your messages, comments, observations and questions through our mobile phone number and all the social media platforms. Once again, thanks for watching. مع السلام لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك
لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا